And because one of the, the most traditional aspects of the shamanic work is a soul retrieval, as it's called. So the feeling is that when somebody has experienced some kind of trauma, which of course most people have on some level, but certainly if it's a intense trauma, that there is almost a piece of the initial energetic body that gets separated, like it, somebody who has been, say, in the war, like in Vietnam, many, many people came back and they had lost their soul, so to speak, because they did unspeakable acts. They had to do them. They were, they were, and then when they came back, they were also not really honored as heroes because many people for a very good reason were so angry about what happened in the Vietnam War. And so those who were not given treatment for that trauma, they, many committed suicide, many became, led very, very unhappy lives. And what's been more and more recognized today is that there is a lot of intergenerational trauma the trauma of, of the at least the two previous generations, somehow by osmosis, the third generation still carries that. And so what's interesting when the work is around the darkness of that trauma, identifying it, giving it a place and allowing people to feel the feelings that were impressed after the trauma happened, that very deep healing happens sometimes immediately. And of course, most time, most of the time it takes many sessions for a person to recover, but complete recovery is possible. That's an amazing thing about the human potential. Many, many things can heal if given the right approach and that it's almost like a privilege for the shaman to be in a position where the client is open enough to work with the shaman because then the shaman gets an opportunity to, to enlist the, these forces and healing is never just for the client. It's all always also for the practitioner. And so that's a very wholesome model that you're not separated from the person you're working with. Which, of course, in modern medicine, which I understand cannot be the case, if the, the doctor is always identified with the clients and many of the clients die, I mean, it's just too much to bear. But in the, the shaman works in, in unity with, with all it is. That's, that's the whole idea. And, and receives extra energy as the work is being done. Yeah, I'm going a bit of, no, 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 this is, this is great. I mean, it's, there are tremendously deep themes here and I guess we could, we could take it in so many directions. I mean, so many themes here, but you were talking about soul retrieval and trauma. And I think that that also highlights a current in our time where all of a sudden, at least in the past few years, I've noticed that trauma has become a buzzword in the collective. It's part of pop culture now. Yes. And, and not that it wasn't before, but it wasn't in the mainstream. It was maybe even in the, and I would like to check with you on this, even in the contemporary, more Western spiritual traditions and non-duality and such, trauma was like a sign of weakness, mm -hmm. perhaps still is. It's, it's, in most cases, it's not addressed or it does not need to be addressed. And uh, perhaps shamanism has come again to the surface as you were talking about the surgeons is because it has the tools to address that. So I threw you a few balls here. If that triggers something, please take it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good balls. Those are really good balls. Yeah. Because it's true. Because I, myself, as, as you, I'm, I love non-dualism. I love Advaita. There is so much wisdom there. Going, going also way back, right? Way back to the Upanishads and so on and so on. But 
the way that spiritual traditions evolve, of course, have their own blind spots, obviously. And, and I understand that you cannot do everything with, within a certain discipline. But I think the, the blind spot of, of non-dualism can be, oh, well, what I really am is spirit essence. So I, I'm not going to work on this trauma. Well, good luck. Good luck. It's always going to have a force of its own, and it's going to have repercussions in, in your daily life. Yes. And maybe for the viewers, Frank, if you could just uh, describe what non-duality, maybe in, in other terms, because ultimately all spiritual traditions are non-dual, but if somebody does Right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point, because certainly shamanism is... is because shamanism feels that there is one spirit, they often call it great spirit, or one kantanka in the in the Lakota Sioux tradition, but also that that there is spirit in everything, in a blade of grass, in, in a tree for sure, in a rock, in a mountain, in a stream somewhere, and then there is the sacred places on the planet, right, where people would love to go, like in India, right, Arunachal in the south of India, where yogis have gathered forever. So that, that's a view of shamanism, that the sacred is everywhere, and sometimes is very concentrated in certain places, but that every single being is connected to source somehow, that there is no difference on, on that level. So I think that's a very, very deep insight and as you mentioned, of all philosophical, well, maybe not philosophical, but spiritual traditions, at the, at the core of it, everything is one, and there is no hierarchy, really. And so a, a good non-dual teacher will try to remind people of that truth, that we are one, and that what we really, really are is is not just the body, of course, is is you could say consciousness or awareness. And that's a very, very deep, deep insight. And when a person is in in a retreat like that, certainly for me that has happened many, many times, or actually in any meditation retreat, the silliness of the mind constructs at some point are so obvious. And Really, at that point, there are no no issues. The, the universe is as it is, and it's it's amazingly beautiful, actually. In the world, there is a lot of suffering that is also felt and seen, but it's also seen that it it shouldn't be like that, or it doesn't have to be like that. That's a better way of putting it. It could be different. It's a choice that's in front of humanity. If humanity has collectively a different route to go, so be it, right? Yeah, but to, but to come back a bit to the approach then, I believe that in order to be effective, the body also needs to be part and parcel of any approach. And of course, in certain, in certain Non-dual traditions, they do have yoga, non-dual yoga, and all of that, which is mostly the yoga of space, right? Or, or becoming one with the cosmos, right? That kind of yoga. Not a yoga which is more body-based, based in the sense of being able to do certain postures in a perfect way. Not like that. Again, there is, of course, room for that. And so in shamanism, through through the sound, through the drumming, through the sometimes the laying on of hands or or the finding where the obstructions are, and also where the what often happens in shamanic sessions is that something very unusual comes out of the patient or the client. They they start to sob and they have no idea why. They're touched somewhere in the body, and and then a memory sometimes comes up, completely suppressed. 
for most of their life, which is an amazing human ability when you think of it, that something very, very dreadful to you happened. Of course, you, when you're one on, or two, it makes sense. But when you're, say, 13, and you have no memory of it whatsoever, and you're already 60, but you feel that something is not quite right, and nothing so far has given you any relief from it, and then you end up in a, in a session where you feel safe enough to let go, and you enter in a space where all of a sudden, and, and this can be very tough, of course, but you kind of fall apart because the identity you assumed to have had or the biography, the, what has been built up as your identity, all of a sudden is shattered. And then what? You know, who am I without the trauma? What does it mean? So that is something that very rarely can happen in just meditative sessions. Meditative sessions, the still point is possible, where the mind temporarily stops, which of course is a great blessing when that happens. Or even if the mind chatter lessens a bit, it's already, wow, you know, it's so great. And then the longing to go back in that space when you enter again in the noise of the world, yeah, I think that's one of the gifts that shamanism has to offer. It honors the, the wisdom, the deep wisdom that is in the body, also of a traumatized body. There, there is a lot of wisdom there that, that has never gone away. But the direct contact with the healthy body has often been lost, and certainly with the healthy mind. Today's minds are overheated, right? Overactive. And I mean, I would include myself in that in spite of all my practices, which I'm grateful for. But on occasion, my, my mind is too active, right? Driving, driving now in Belgium amongst all of these trucks on the highways and the speed and all that. I'm happy when I'm home. And then, and then very quickly, I relax. So, so that's certainly something that I feel I have achieved a little bit is to go back to still point. Yes. But yes, this, this has to be addressed. If humanity wants to take its next leap, which is necessary, it's really, it's, it's felt by almost everybody that I know that the life as we know it, the structures as we know it, the violation really of nature, still the, in, in spite of everything, the dominance of patriarchy, where the feminine is not fully honored, the still today, the disrespect of native cultures, the suppression of native cultures, the looking down on it, as if those people, not that there are that many native cultures left, because many have been eradicated, but the wisdom of those cultures is still available. And quite a few elders from those cultures are have made themselves available in the last, I don't know, 30 years or so. And they come, they come forward, shamans that have not been ever part of the mainstream world or have come out sometimes with prophecies that are a bit doom and gloom but certainly with wake-up calls wake up humanity the time has come time has come yeah absolutely wow thank you so much frank so we were talking about the connection of trauma mm -hmm. and shamanism